Good morning. Um, most of you know me. My name's Sally. Um, I'm going to start this morning by having a bit of a review of what we've been doing in the last year. Um, and we've, it would be fair to say we believe we've un, somewhat under-delivered with 5.1. So we're going to start by having a little talk about that, and then we'll move on to some of the new exciting stuff that's coming. So the first question is, what is the current ACMS release? Now, sounds like a straightforward question, but actually at the moment it's not, because we have got ourselves in a little bit of a muddle. So if you're a user of Android apps exclusively, you will find yourselves on ACMS release 5.1.3, and that has a new ASS app associated with it, and you have got access to the bulletin module, which some of you are using. However, if you are on iOS apps, you have not got release 5.1 because we have not managed to deliver the new ASS app on iOS. So you are stuck on release 5010, which does not have the bulletin module in it. Now, all, there are a few reasons for this. Um, we recruited an iOS developer who then left us. So then Jules took the job back over and promptly fell off his bike and broke his leg. So, it's a bit of a tale of woe, and we're very sorry, but we have got back on the front foot now, and we will be converging uh, later this year on release 5.2, which will have a new ASS for everybody, and will have the bulletin module and all the new features we're going to talk about today. We also had some performance problems with 5.1 when we tried to release it to some of you who've got bigger systems. Um, so we've, we've had to do a bit of plumbing work on the system as well, but we are now back in a stable position. So, what am I going to talk about here? Well, let's have a review of what we said we were going to deliver last time, a year ago now. We were said we were going to deliver a new ASS app. We did it for Android in 5.1. We haven't done it for iOS yet. That's coming in 5.2, as I just said. We said we were going to do some work on assessment states, if you remember that. I'm going to go through each of these in some detail. We didn't do that because it's held up by the above. Um, we also said we were going to deliver dashboards, and we haven't done that either um, because we've had some performance problems. We will go through that. So it's all a bit of a tale of woe. Um, we said we were going to de deliver configurable resources, and we did, and Brock will give you an overview of how that's working a little later. Um, we said we were going to deliver the bulletin module, and we did. We, we also ended up focusing on three things we didn't talk about at last year's user forum which we will go through later today. The check module, which is a new thing. Um, forms, which is a new thing in the base module. And also we've done quite a lot of work on localization. Some of those are in 5.1 and some of them are in 5.2. So what we're going to do before coffee now is work through this little list and talk about what's in each bit of it. Everybody happy? Cool. So let's talk. Let's <clears throat> Easy for me to say. Let's start with the bits of that that are to do with the assessment module. So ASS and its new features. The first thing it's got is um, assessment planning screens. And if you're on Android, you've seen these. But you, it's, it's sort of like a, um, a little mini view of the CMS events on the app. So you can see uh, any assessments you're supposed to be doing that are overdue, any that are due in the next 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. You can also switch modes and see the assessments that are due on you. The other thing is there's a new... F <clears throat> uh, please don't tell me I'm losing my voice. I can't, I can't survive. I love the sound of my own voice. Right. Um, you can also see all the unassessed units in the schedule, which is a new filter, which, which is handy. So as you're going along through a candidate schedule, you can always flip to just see the list of everything that's not been assessed yet. And when you're towards the end of a schedule, that's pretty useful. So we presented this last year, but we have made some changes to it following some feedback we got last year. So at the moment, let's just talk about what happens to an assessment as it, in its life through the system. So it starts off, an assessor meets with a candidate, and either using the app or using ACMS, they do an assessment. And they go along, marking criteria, doing feedback, all sorts of things. And that's in the draft state. At some point, the assessor decides that's finished, and hits the finish button, and that moves to the complete state. Either at the time or later, the candidate can sign that 
wherever that means in your local language, and it becomes sealed. Now, for most people today, that, that's all that they use. Okay? Now, we wanted to enhance that because assessments would, were getting stuck in different states. So the first thing we've done is we've introduced the idea of an auto-seal. So this is the idea that you can say to your candidates, you've got 28 days or whatever amount of time you want to sign your assessment, and if you don't object to it, it'll be automatically signed. You can turn this on and off and you can set your own time limits. When it's in the auto-sealed state, the candidate can still go and seal it. They can still sign it. If, it's, if, they, if that auto-seal timer hasn't expired um, and they don't like their assessment, they can appeal it. On the system today, this is called objection, but this, is, um, this language is more in line with what we teach when we do MVQs and assessor awards and things. So they can put it in the appealed state, which stops the auto-seal timer from ticking, if that makes sense. Now, when it's in the appealed state, the assessor has to pick it up and put it in the review state. The idea being, at this point in time, the assessor and the candidate can have a conversation and hopefully resolve their issues. So either the candidate can agree that the objection was a bit silly, or the appeal was a bit silly, and seal the assessment, or the assessor can agree that the appeal was valid and uphold it. Now, if it gets into that upheld state, it's a dead thing. It's an invalid assessment. They don't go and edit it and change it. They make a new one. Assess them again. Now, should the candidate and the assessor not be able to agree, because that never happens, um, the verifier can get involved and move it to each of those states. Now, that's the, so that's the, that's the slightly updated version of what we presented yesterday. Not yesterday, last year. Now, we've, we've added some uh, features as a result of some feedback from last year. There are going to be a lot of new fields on the assessment record for candidates and assessors and, and verifiers to make comments at different stages through the process. Um, oops so that you get a, like a history of state changes, who changed the state of the assessment and why. We've also increased some visibility of dates following some feedback. So on the user interface at the moment, you can see the assessment date, which is the date the assessor put into either the app or the system as the start date of the assessment, which can be different to the time they actually did it. So, and sometimes that's valid. So sometimes a person for whatever reason, I don't know, dog at my homework, forgot my iPad, whatever, does an assessment on a piece of paper and then goes and records it later, it would be valid for the assessment date to be different to the system created date. However, some of you suspected that your assessors were backdating assessments in, in an invalid way in order to kind of dupe the system into thinking they weren't late. So we're going to put both of these dates on the user interface so you can see them, so you can sort of see if, a, if, a, if an assessment was recorded, actually done a month later than they said it was done, then you can go, kind of go and find out why. Uh, there's a new homepage widget on the uh, dashboard to give any assessor a list of any of the assessments that are stuck in the draft state, because if they haven't completed them, the candidate can't sign them and they hang around being draft forever, which isn't a good thing. Does that all make sense? I will take, from you, Stuart, I will take a question at any time, but you need to wait for someone to run with the mic. Because, by the way, we are recording this. We've not got any of you on video. We've got me and the front desk on video, but we are sound recording all of it. Did we get to the bottom of candidate present, not present, and all that pin number stuff? Because we are really duping the system when the college says, well, I can't remember it. Well, you're not present then. So but you are. So in the latest version of ASS, in the next, the one you're going to get in a minute, there, is, there are some additional options there um, so, so that you can say uh, candidate chooses not to sign, I think is the, is the, I mean you can, we talk about localization in a minute, you can make the words say what you like, but, but yes, there is a third thing, yeah. We don't use the candidate signing bit due to issues with drivers. Um, when the assessment's done on the tablet, it comes across complete. Correct. But when it's done on the laptop, 
it stays in draft. Yeah, that's what this widget's for, so people can find them and go and sign them and go and complete them. The assessor can Is there any way them. that can do auto-complete on the laptop? It doesn't at the moment, but we could, um, we could take a feature request for that as an option. Because we're going to have quite a few of those reminders otherwise. So, yeah, so we could have an option to save as complete. The, the difficulty is with that is when you're doing it on the laptop, it's draft. How does the system know you've finished? Um, so if it completes it every time you save it, you have to keep going and reopening it in order to edit it. So it is a, there is a slight difficulty with that, but we can certainly think about it. Okay, moving on. So that was everything that, in, that is at all new in the assessment module. Got some new stuff coming in the base module. First of all, we talked about dashboards last year. They weren't delivered in 5.1, as I said. They are functionally complete, but they caused a lot of system load issues. When we powered them up on the bigger systems, they brought the thing to a halt. So we've had to make some, we've had to make some systems architecture changes in order to support these. They are now well underway, testing is underway, and we are planning to deliver those dashboards that everybody wants in release 5.2. Okay, hello everybody. Um, you probably recognize me as Brock. Um, I'm going to go through some of the stuff here about configurable resources, uh, talking about what it is uh, kind of from an admin point of view, um, especially because it's a bit of a, just by the name, it can be quite confusing. Okay. So configurable resources <laughs> are things that people can sign. Okay. And you can break these down into kind of groups, things like engineering tasks, manager competencies all the way to things like routes and traction that we currently track on ATMS. Um, we, have, we can break these into what we call types and subtypes, which are groups for you to visualize what people sign. Okay? And you can assign these to different roles, which is something we'll come on to in a moment. Um, there is an admin user guide for anybody who is on version um, 5.1. Okay, those Android users, as we mentioned earlier, okay, you will have all this enabled on your system, but if you're unsure on how to use it, new modules and big things like this, we understand can be a bit daunting. Okay, you should have got a user guide with your update. If you haven't got it or you've lost it, just let us know and we'll help you out. Okay. Uh, it's not currently used for legacy resources. Okay, so routes and tractions. We haven't migrated these over to use the resources um, section, but that will be happening eventually. Okay, we want to use everything to be nice and um, homogenous. It still uses the same kind of things. You don't have to remember one set of tasks for routes and a different set of uh, admin functionality for traction. That doesn't really make sense. Okay, so it will all be going over to one thing in a future release. Okay. Uh, have I lost anybody with that? Okay. So going into a little bit more detail, as mentioned, okay, we have a hierarchy for resources. So we have types followed by subtypes, followed by the actual resources, the things that you sign at the very bottom. Okay. Those two types there are just there to help you visualize and group the actual resources themselves. Okay. This will all come with new candidate dashboard tabs. Okay, so when you look at a person on ACMS, you'll be able to click in to say, show me that person's engineering tasks, show me that person's uh, managerial competencies. Okay, but obviously you don't want to see those for ones that aren't relevant. So they will only show according to which roles you've assigned them to. Here's an example here. Routes and tractions, they're both relevant to guards and drivers. But they're not relevant to dispatchers, as an example. Okay? Engineering tasks will only show for engineering people. Okay? And some things can show for everybody. Okay? So you've got that option there, so you don't get inundated with lots more information. You may notice some more tabs show up, but you won't have too much. Okay? Is everybody happy with configurable resources? Okay. And again, those of you on, currently on iOS that are um, still on version 5.0, when this comes out, you will get the user guide. Um, but obviously, feel free to call us or let us know if you have any questions. We'll help you out. Okay. 
So the next thing I want to talk about is localization. Okay. So I've actually got a little video for this. Okay. Localization is all about um, different languages on ACMS. Okay. There we go. So on ACMS, you will see a new localization option. Okay. And as an admin, you will have this. You can see here on my example, I've got English and French as options. If I open up English, you can see I've got all the values here in English and you can change those to anything that you would like. Here's my French example where I've changed them to French. Okay. Um, in this way, you can make things in English say different things. If you want to change the word active to enabled, you can do that. In this little key section, we keep that the same. That's what ACMS uses to find out what it is. And it's that value section that you can change. Okay. So here you can see everything's in English. And if I switch it over to French, um, obviously the system will take some time to reload and just pick up the new information. And there we go. I haven't changed everything here, but you can see system default has changed. Okay. Description is still description. Okay. And that will change all over the system. Um, and this will also happen on apps as well. Okay. If you want to say, change something from, say, from signed to accepted, okay, you have the power to go into localization and change that. Okay. This is there for approximately 80% of the system at the moment uh, in version 5.1. Okay. Um, apps and the rest of it will be coming in 5.2, as mentioned by Sally earlier. If you saw a slash there, there's, there's, there's a lot of different words on the system. A lot more than you can, that you actually think there is when you look into it. Okay. Is everybody happy with that? I haven't lost anybody there. Um, obviously, really useful to kind of customize the system and make it easier to use. Um, and the same for the apps as well. Okay. And next, we're going to talk about forms. Okay. Which I'm going to hand over to Jace uh, to talk about forms, which is a new part of the base module. Okay. So I'm going to talk about forms, as Brock said. It's a new module that is coming as part of a future release. It's going to be part of the base module, which means you all get it from the off when it's ready to come out. Um, and it was kind of built to address all the random information that you want to collect uh, up for competence management. So the kind of things like the driver manner driving hours or when engineers complete tasks, uh, the electronic return to work forms, and even some people want to track uh, refueling of trains. Uh, it's come about from the desire to go paperless, so it's all the things that you kind of store in your cabinets that you don't then look at uh, because you can't, you've got no access to. And because it's stored electronically, we can analyze and report upon it later on. So it works in very much the same way the rest of the system works. So we've got these new things called form types. And these are the template that you build for the questions. And they have properties. And the properties are much like the incident type properties. So you fill them in, and you can give them names, and you order them on the form. And these are the questions that you are asking your candidates when you fill in stuff. And through these, you can constrain the answers that you uh, allow them to give as well. Uh, you allocate the forms based on the audience. So if you just want drivers to fill in a form, you uh, allocate it to the driver audience, for example. And the users create the forms based on the form types that the admins put into the system. And the data that you enter can be shown on reports and dashboards. Does that make sense to everyone? Cool. Uh, so I've got a quick demo, which I filmed in advance. So it's going to be a video. I'm going to talk over it. If you have any questions, I'll just pick them up at the end. So we start, if you log in as a candidate, you'll have a new section called Forms, and we're going to look at the Form Workbench today. So if we open up the Form Workbench, on the left side of the screen, you can see all the forms that are available to the person logged in, and you can search by the name of the form as well. So if you just type something in the top, uh, you can see that it filters it and highlights it so you can easily look for the form that you're looking for uh, throughout. Uh, only the forms that you are allowed to fill in will appear in this list. And they're 
sorted into categories, as you can see. So to add a form, you click on the form that you want to complete. And as you can see, it's come up already with some populated information. The start time's already put in because that's the time you've added the form. The completed time and the status get filled in at the end. So if we fill it in, this is an example of an interesting question. What month are you entering driver hours for? As you can see, it's a date field. So we've added a guidance option. And this says, please select the first of the month that you're inputting the data for. So let's pick August. So we want to put in the first of August. And then you just fill in the rest of the fields as you would normally elsewhere on the system. Uh, perfect. And then you submit that, like you would with any other information uh, within the system. And then it appears in this top box here. Uh, this is a draft form, so you haven't okayed it, and you haven't said, kind of, I'm finished with it. And you can go back and edit it. So let's say we want to change the name of the book driver, and we've changed it, and then you submit it again, like you would elsewhere. And then from this, you can then lock it. And when you lock it, it, uh, it asks for confirmation, and then it moves down into the bottom box. And that's you saying that you filled in this form, you're finished with it, it's ready to be used as a source of data within your system. As you can see, it's got the completed time. And then when you go back into it, you can't edit any more of the fields. They're all read-only. So these are set, and you, you've kind of okayed it, and it's gone or it's in the system now. Does that all make sense so far? Perfect. So now we're going to look at how to build the forms. So first of all, oh, sorry. Thanks. Just a quick question on that bit there. What probably would be useful as well on the options on the form time when it's completed is an email as an option. A bit like as a, an assessment, you can email a PDF of it to yourself. Okay. I think at that point, that option to email a form would be really useful as well. Okay. Is that for when you want to collect the data or is that after you filled it in? Either. Because obviously if you're collecting data, that's on a probably a company level or a group level. Okay. Whereas you might want a copy of one individual form. So having the email PDF... Okay. Like an assessment, I would see could be useful in certain circumstances. Yeah, Otherwise, then really screen dumping or something like um, that. Perfect. Well, well, we'll certainly look into putting it in email for both after and before you've completed the form. So we're going to look at building it now. Hopefully, my video will get through. Yes. So first, we're going to look at the the way you set up the categories or the folders. So. Again, much like everywhere else in the system, we get an admin. You can add, edit, and delete them from here. Um, on the left, you can see that they appear. Uh, this will sort of be more interesting as we add one. But let's say you want to add driver manager forms. So we're adding a new folder called driver here. And then you select the parent uh, category that you want to choose. So in this instance, we're going to choose manager forms. And then when you submit the form, it reloads the uh, list on the left in the proper hierarchy so you can see that we now have driver underneath manager forms, which means that it's not much like the way you do folders in your desktop, you can sort the forms uh, in a m nice kind of way. Uh, but let's look at the form type, because that's some, a lot more interesting. Uh, so let's look at the train refueling form. These are just two that we built earlier, just to show an example. And much like the rest of the system, it pops up, and you can see the list of things here. But we're going to focus on the driver manager's form, because that's the one we filled in. There's some guidance here. You've got a name and description, which are obviously fully customizable. You've got the start date, and you can fill in an end date or deprecate it. So you can say how long you want this form to run for. So you can filter them out uh, sort of on the fly. You don't have to wait for uh, it to fall out of um, use before you get rid of it from being entered, but it will keep old data. So if we look at the month question that we had, we could see that it's of type date, and we've got the question, what month are you entering the hours for, and then the guidance that we saw appear next to the question mark, where you select the first of the month for the data you're entering. But we're going to add a new question to this form. So let's say we want to start recording the head code of the train that was driven when you did the hours. So we're going to type in head code. You can choose a type. For this one, we're just going to choose text, because that's the easiest way to sort of record this. You can say whether it's a mandatory field or not. Uh, the auto lock is for how many times you want it to be uh, before you have to wait for it to expire before it has to be filled in. And we're just going to use the, train, uh, the question, what is the train head code? It appears in the list, and we submit it. 
And now that is part of that form. So anyone from now on that fills in that form will have that question available to them. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, so now we're going to look at the different ways you can view the forms. So if we go to the, the kind of most exciting way, if you go to my page, you can see all the forms that you've filled in. So if you go to my page, you can see that there's a new tab called My Forms. And here, all the forms that you filled in, uh, sort of grouped by the form type, will be listed. Uh, you can see that it's got the completed time, and it's locked because you have set it as completed. But if you open it and scroll down, uh, you can see that you've already got the new question on there because it's real time. So every time you update these, they will get access to the new questions, and it will always be as up-to-date as you want it to be. Uh, yes. So the other place you can see it is if you're a manager, you can log in and see it on the people search. So you can see what forms your candidates have filled in. Uh, I didn't go into that because it's much the same as the My Page. It's just for you can look up a specific person. The more interesting one for managers is the form admin. So the form admin just loads all the forms that have been entered within the system. And on the right, you can see that there's a search bar, much like the rest of the system, where you can search by form type, the date it was completed, the date it was input into the system, and then the normal candidate search fields. And if we open it from here, as you can see, the new question has appeared. And you can't edit the data, because you wouldn't go here to edit your own forms. It's the forms for the people who have put them in. But you can unlock the form for a candidate. So if they've locked it by mistake or prematurely, you can unlock it for them. So get them out of the uh, stuck state. Um, this is only available for managers, so it's not like they can unlock it themselves and edit the data for later. You always are aware that they've requested an unlock. And from here, you can delete old forms as well. If you don't want them anymore, or you don't track that thing, or it was entered wrong or inputted wrongly, you can delete it. So you can always clean up and you get out of your stuck state, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to everyone? Perfect. Mr. Player. Microphone, please. Is there a home page widget that will take you directly to inputting something? No. So there, as with all the admins, you can add a home page widget which opens up the admin. However, if you think it's a good idea, we can add some configurable buttons that have like an add form. If someone's doing something all the time, like adding hours, we can sort of look into that, getting a widget so you can add forms from the home page. OK. Might be useful, yes, because <laughs> the, the people that are the, the, you know, less button clicks, the better. Yes, if exactly someone says, I just need to add a form, and We're I'm straight into which one. Less button clicks. Yeah. Um, one thing we kind of want you to think about um, is think of those forms, bits of paper that you still use currently, and can you use what you've seen today and what's coming in forms? And if there's anything that's kind of not there at the moment, do let us know um, so we can kind of build this out so you, we do remove those kind of paper things um, and get it onto the system where it uh, can be more useful. Yeah, and there's a syndicate this afternoon on ACMS requirements where we can do a bit more detail on this. Thank you, Jace. Hand over for the Okay, so at last year's user forum, we talked a lot about the bulletin module. And some of you, quite a lot of you actually, have started using it. And not surprisingly, we've had some feedback from that use. And so we've made a few additions and changes. So I just want to run through a little overview of what it is for those who weren't here last year, and then some of the changes. And then we'll let you have a cup of coffee and a biscuit. So this is just what it says on the, our website, which is that the bulletin module is all about distributing notices. And you can distribute them to people just for information, or you can require them to sign for them. Um, there's a bulletin app, which at the moment is only available on Android devices, where people can actually get push notifications and receive those bulletins in the field and sign for them. So, just a reminder then, bulletins operate on the basis of audiences. Audiences are 
different from teams. Teams are just lists of people with a, with a leader. Audiences are dynamic. You can do static ones that are just lists of people, but the more useful ones are the dynamic ones. And Oops, I thought I had another bullet there. I don't. Uh, they are done on the basis of rules. So you can make an audience for all the drivers who also own hold guards competence, or all the engineers who work in Norwich, or all the people over 50, or something. Um, and, and they exist to distribute bulletins, which are just the items you want to distribute. And they're split into categories in much the same way that forms would, are in terms of a hierarchy. Um, and you can do version control, and you can request whether these are mandatory to be signed for. So, that's where we were last year. What's new? So, this is a requirement that came from Mr. Kilner, actually. Thank you, Mr. Kilner. Um, we need a new option for accepting and signing bulletins, because before we only had, do you accept it? And the answer was yes or no. Now, th there's kind of three states here. One is that they haven't read it, and they're not ready to accept it. But when they are ready to accept it, they need to be able to say, I accept and understand, or I've kind of read it, but I don't get it. I need some help. Now, um, those, are, those phrases can be whatever you like because they can be set up through localization. So, in your own words. Um, we, the system, <coughs> in version 5.1 that you've got at the moment, you can set audiences up on the basis of things like region, depot, role type, whether people are an assessor or not, and their various security groups. In using this, people have uncovered some new requirements, so we're doing some new parameters so that you can create audiences on the basis of any configurable resources they sign, plus the legacy resources like routes, tractions, locations, links, TC annotation, and also age, because for the medical distribution stuff, that goes to sometimes to people over a certain age. Does that all make sense? Cool, good stuff. Um, we have launched the app. Um, it runs on tablets and phones, Android only at the moment. You get a home page that looks like this, which is just some shortcuts. So you can see either all your documents or ones in a particular category, like your favourites. Um, and when you click in, you get a list of the documents and you can sort them and search for them and open them and read them and sign for them and stuff. Okay. And I think that's all I wanted to say about Bulletin. Any questions about Bulletin? Hurry up, Gabriel. Uh, our, our early uh, trials of, of the Bulletin app, um, when you open a, a document and then close that document, it automatically logs you out the app. Um, and that's going to drive everyone nuts. Um, there, there might be more than, more than one document they want to look at. Uh, uh, we can set the uh, change to the timeout until you get timed out um, and it logs you out the app. We can up that to whatever you would like, five, ten minutes. I think it's currently set at like two minutes, I think, until yeah. it logs you out. The, the, um, the problem is it's a, it's a security concern, okay? So the people don't leave their app logged in, but we can, as Brock says, the time is configurable, which will solve that for you, we believe. I raised red mine. Sorry? I raised red mine. Good idea. I didn't get that. <laughs> Sorry. Me again. Can you go back a slide, Sally? Uh, one more. So the... the Back one. So Back one or forward one? Forward, forward, that one, the, the app. So those of us that have difficulty reading and now wear glasses, some of us have expanded the font size on the app because uh, it, it shows up a little bit better. Um, but then you get it all half cut off. It doesn't actually model itself okay. to the actual what you can now see. Yeah, so we're not taking account of those parameters, so we need to fix that. So. Make a red mine and we'll fix it. I think it was already a red mine. Okay, actually, then so. we'll fix it. <laughs> cool. That's all that as well. Brilliant. Note to self. Huh? Take Anyone else? account of people who wear glasses. Got it. No, they don't. Oh, I see. You <laughs> got it. I understand. Okay. So um, we were going to have a little Q&A wash up, but um, actually, given that we're running a bit late, I think we should probably move straight to coffee, shall we? Is it 11.15? Yeah. Yeah. Can we take um, 15 minutes and be back in here at 11.30, please? So I've got all your questions on here, which is perfect, so we're not missing them out. We're going to come back to them. 
so we will get to them. At the end of the next session, we'll pick them all up. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody. So I'm going to talk to you today uh, about the check module as well. Um, so the check module is a brand new module, okay, uh, coming in 5.1, and uh, it's coming partially in 5.1, and more will be coming in 5.2, okay. We originally designed this um, module for uh, Great Western Railway uh, to help them facilitate with, with fitness for duty checks. Okay. Um, so, what is the check module? Here is uh, the spiel from the website. Okay. The check module is all about performing fast checks in the workplace. Okay. So, this will be used with an app. It can also be done on ACMS. It's all about any kind of check. Okay, this is for managers. Okay, not necessarily assessors. This is where it varies from ASS to perform those checks. Um, maybe as it's fitness for duty, as they're in a mess hall, maybe they're on the gate line. Okay, they can say yes, no, a binary options um, for what we call a default check, and then you can also set up your own custom checks. For example. Um, fitness, for, uh, for example, attendance at safety briefs, okay, or maybe a fatigue check as well. Okay, I will be going through these in a second. So, what is a default check? Um, it's designed to be used as a fitness for duty check. So, it's binary, it's fit or unfit. The words can be whatever you want them to be, as we mentioned earlier about localization in the system. It can be figured for any simple check, but the main point is that it's part of every time you see that person. Okay, That's why we want it to be as simple as possible. That way, when you go and see someone as part of a safety briefing, you can say that you've seen them, and you can say whether they're fit or unfit, whether they are well. Okay, Maybe as part of a fatigue check, you obviously need to check that they're fit for duty. Um, and even if you've just had time with your manager, you've just spent uh, 10 minutes talking to them, it's a way of you saying, excellent. And all this stuff we can build up into another bank of evidence for that candidate. Okay. This is already part of ACMS 5.1. Okay. The default check part is what is part of 5.1. Okay. Coming as part of 5.2, we have what we call custom checks. So this is about other kinds of check, things like fatigue and attendance at safety briefings. They have customizable properties. So this is get about gathering a little bit more evidence while you're out and about. And it's things that you can set at the start, maybe to be entered by an administrator. For example, for we'll come to examples of all this in a moment. Um, but for example, for fatigue, you might want to know the fatigue index of the person when this was triggered. Okay but you may not know all of the answers at that time to all these questions. And those will be things that are filled in later on, okay, by the manager who is authorized to um, perform one of these. You can target these at individuals or audiences. We mentioned, we mentioned audiences a lot. Okay, so you can send it out to all drivers or you can say just Joe Blogs. Okay, and as mentioned, this was delivered in ACMS 5.2. So, Let's have a look at the app, a check first. We've got some screenshots here. It's an app for managers. We're repeating this quite a bit, but this is not just for assessors, okay? It's for any authorized set of users, okay? You can see the same candidates that you're allowed to see on ACMS, okay? So based on security group and role group. It allows you to perform default checks. So here's an example. I've opened up a depot. I've got a few people in it, okay? And here you can see the past checks that this person has gone through. Okay, so we can see which ones, when they were mentioned fit and when they were mentioned unfit. Okay, and then as mentioned, this is in 5.1. And in 5.2 with the app, you will be able to set up custom checks. And as you can see here, this has more detail. So for example, at the top we can see uh, when our fatigue index, when it was broken, because we're going to go and perform a fatigue check on someone. And you can see that's not editable. That was filled in when the person kind of was triggered this action. Okay. But the number of consecutive turns worked. And uh, did you get enough sleep uh, last night? Those are both 
filled in there on the app. Okay, and at the bottom here, we make our overall judgment uh, on the fatigue check that they're allowed to work, and part of the fitness check, we also say that they're fit for duty as well. Okay, so as mentioned, it's always done as part of both. Okay, have I lost anybody with the app there? All right, and doing that. Yep, Stuart. Uh, when you say questions... But you've, you've put, did you have enough sleep last night? Yes. Oh, you can have as many of those. And they are set up in the same way um, as Jace showed with forms. Yep. You can say whether it must be a date, it must be a time, uh, a list of options. For example, yes, no. Um, and you can have as many questions as you like on there for a custom check. Yeah. Okay. Right, so with the app out of the way, just to show you a bit, little bit of that on ACMS as well. Okay, so here is me performing a default check on ACMS. Okay, so as part of this module, you will have a new option in your menu for check, and we have one called Perform Checks. Okay, which will list all the people on our system here. We don't have too many, and we can jump into someone and we can do a fitness check by simply selecting the option, fit or unfit, and the other required thing is a location, okay, where we were when we did this, as we don't want the same person doing it in the same place to the same candidate all the time, so we can track these and then say, look, this was done, okay? And it's as simple as that, two different options, and then you can submit that, okay? The next part is actually about scheduling custom checks. So as mentioned, that default checks are all in 5.1, currently released onto, out to Android customers. For scheduling custom checks, so this is part of 5.2. And this is where you actually set up and then say who is going to um, need these custom checks. So here is an example. You will see even more options in my check menu now. And I can go to what we call the check workbench. Again, you'll see the word repeat a lot. And I can schedule a custom check. So here we're going to schedule our fatigue check. It's a bit small on the big screen. And we're going to select which set of people we're going to send it to. In this case, I'll send it to a whole audience. Okay. It fills in when we're going to actually send it. So we can start doing some analytics on when it was sent. And then I must fill out the any start properties. Okay, so in this case, the fatigue index went broken, which we've seen on the app. Click submit, and it will successfully create those records, and you'll see them pop up into the list. Okay, so you can schedule this, as mentioned, for audiences or for individuals. Okay, and then just to close the loop, the final thing we're going to do is actually go and perform a, a fatigue check on ACMS. Okay, just like it is on the app. If I come back to my perform checks as a manager, okay, you'll see this blue box on the right hand side shows people who have got custom checks. And here at the top, in the top left, you'll see we've got fatigue checks and fitness for duty up there. Okay. So again, I can fill in all the same detail that I did on the app. So I fill in my options, I fill in where I am, I fill in all my properties. Okay. Um, however, as mentioned, because you must always do the fitness for duty check, I will get an error when I try and submit that, okay? And I can then go and fill in the fitness for duty check as well, and then that's ready to be submitted, okay? So again, we're trying to keep it so we match the apps to the web interface, so you can do them all in the same way. And as mentioned, all of this custom check stuff will be coming in ACMS 5.2. Have I lost anybody? Is everybody happy with that? Any questions? Stuart doesn't want to be the only person to ask it's, it's me again. <laughs> um, is there a way, if I'm seeing Fred blogs, that I can go into his home page and see what I've got to check him off for? So rather than saying, oh, do I need to do you a fitness? I think I've got to have a conversation with you. But if I go into you and say, oh, crumbs, look, you've got three or four things I need to talk to you about today, and we can clear them off in one. Yeah. Um, on the app, if I just go back a little bit, you can actually see here all of his custom checks on the app are listed on that left-hand side. Now I've got his fatigue one selected. The other ones are just called custom. 
Um, but you can see all that list on the app there, to see them that way. Um, on ACMS, uh, I haven't got, obviously, through those videos on there, um, there is a way to see them on the my page of the person. They can see what's been done to them. Um, I'm not sure about the bulletin, uh, I'm not sure about the um, candidate dashboard. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at Jason. I think it's something that we'll... Yeah, I, I think it, 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 it is makes certainly, sense. It is certainly our intention to show yeah. checks on both my page and the candidate dashboard. <coughs> I think at the moment you can't see them on the candidate dashboard because we haven't quite finished the development. Yeah, it's more of a what have I got to do rather than what have I done. Yeah. 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 You can see that on the app. Okay, any, any other questions? Okay, um, so again, to keep it lively, I'm gonna pass back to Sally to talk about Assessbook. Okay. So we're gonna switch lanes a bit now, and between now and lunchtime, we're gonna talk about new features on Assessbook, AssessTube, and then a bit of a story on how these things are all coming together um, in terms of integration and also integration with some external systems. So, on to Assessbook. Um, does everybody remember what Assessbook is? Learning management system? You're looking very bored. So, it's based on Tatara or Totra, depending on where in the country you live. Um, and it's, uh, we're currently on Totra version 11. And last user forum we presented a new theme for uh, Assessbook and we've done some more work on the theme. We've changed the way the courses are displayed on the dashboard um, in, in response to a requirement Mr Taylor had actually. Where are you Mr Taylor? Thank you for that. We think that's a very good idea. And we've also got some custom dashboards. The same ones that aren't delivered on ACMS yet are delivered on Assessbook. So, um, and I'll go through each of those in a minute. We've also delivered a criteria plugin. This might have been Andrew's idea as well, um, which allows you to take the results of quizzes people have done on SCORM packages and um, map them to performance criteria on ACMS, such that you can use the results of quizzes to kind of seed an assessment on somebody and, and mark off some performance criteria. And I've got a little snippet from a... Um, report here and this is uh, you can see the performance criteria at the top 800 B1 um, and the person's had there are two questions that do something with this performance criteria and there have been three attempts on each of the two questions and you can see what, what answer they gave, what answer they were supposed to give and whether it was correct or not. So you can open this report up and use it to build an assessment on the person which means you don't have to go and assess them unless you need to, you can actually use the results of their quiz. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, and Assessbook is now integrated into the ACMS candidate dashboard. As long as you've got linked user accounts, you can see people's courses, people on assess... Blah, blah, blah. Start that again. You, on ACMS, you can see the courses that they've done and their progress on those courses on a tab on AC, ACMS. Andrew's got a question, please. Not fiddling with your phone, are you, Mr. Stroud? <laughs> Can I just check with the criteria plugin that you still have the option of going into the assessment and amending it and putting comments in it before it gets sealed? It doesn't make an assessment. It gives you yeah. data to make an assessment with, so you can do what you like with it at the moment. But it's not intrinsically linked to pre-populating criteria in ASS, for example? It if you hold that thought for a minute, that we are going to do that, but that's not what it does at the moment. But okay. in any case, we wouldn't submit an assessment. We, the, the system is not a qualified assessor. Exactly. And we need to, and yes. we need to abide by that rule. Yes, sorry, I, I misheard you. No, that's okay. You keep holding it for me next year. What did you say? Don't be rude to the customers. I've told you that before. Why break the habit of a lifetime? <laughs> so... Let's have a look at these theme changes. That's the login page. That hasn't changed. Um, if you look at the um, candidate uh, dashboard now, you see in grid form the courses that they are, to which they are subscribed. And that's very similar to the way it looks at the moment. Now, the way it looks at the moment, they are always 
shown in last accessed order, which is pretty rubbish if you've got a load of them because you can't find the one you want. So there are some options at the top here to sort this, either in last access order, alphabetical order, or date in which you were enrolled. You can also open these up now so that you can see the tasks within a course and you can see your progress on this page. So you can open and close that. The grid view is lovely if you've got five or six courses and absolutely useless if you've got 332. So you can also switch it by the other toggle into a list view. For those of you who can't see Andrew, he just had a moment. So when you're in the list view, again, you can open it up and see the progress against each of the tasks. So you, and you can filter these so that you can see all of the courses or just the ones that are not completed um, and again you can sort it alphabetically by enroll date or by last access date so things are a bit easier to find back to the login screen um, logging in now as somebody who's an assessor i'll show you some custom dashboards so before i do that what do we think of that is that a better user interface for assess book Okay, we don't care very much, that's good. Okay. Yes. Yes, good. <laughs> so, um, logging in as uh, a, an assessor, I've got mine in list view, and if I scroll down, I can see one of these custom dashboards. Now, this is on our own ACMS, tr uh, uh, this is on our own assess book system that we use to manage our own training center, and what I'm looking at here is people who are on an award, in this case with GWR, and it's the assessor award and which tasks they have and haven't done. And we actually can give this little widget to the learner managers within the organisations and they can only see, so Katie in GWR has got this, but she can only see GWR people. Um, another a different dashboard can just be a little report that comes up on the screen that tells me for any of my assessors who haven't marked work. So I can go and say, why haven't you marked that person's work? They're waiting for it. <laughs> anyway, so there's a couple of examples of um, custom dashboards. So if you remember from last year, you can have a dashboard that's got any data from the database in it displayed in any fashion. And you, you can have these on the assess book interface as well as on the ACMS interface. Any questions on assess book? No. Cool. So, <laughs> he's given up the microphone. We're in business. Right, so assess tube. Um, so, about a year or maybe two years ago, we did a huge migration on assess book where we converted from Moodle to Totra. We're just about to do the same thing, we've just done the same thing with assess tube. We've moved from the old Cumulus Clips shareware platform to a platform called VIMP. And VIMP is a commercially supported system, it's not shareware, and it has a lot of um, benefits associated with it over and above Cumulus Clips. Um, specifically, it gives you enhanced video tracking options. So on the old system, you could just say whether they'd opened the video or not. You can now say how long, how long through they played it. You still can't tell whether they actually watched it or not. They could have played it and gone and done something else in the meantime, but we're getting there. Um, it's got a new theme. I'll show you the new theme in a minute. And you can, the theme can be branded to your own branding, just like you can on ACMS and Assessbook. Um, and this can be integrated into the ACMS candidate dashboard in the same way that Assessbook is, but only if individuals have individual user accounts on this system. I know some of you use shared accounts on AssessTube, so that obviously doesn't make sense to track video views against a group of people. Do you want to ask that question in about 10 minutes? <laughs> um, so let's have a look at the theme. That's the login page. Um, there's a candidate, uh, not a candidate, a user dashboard, a learner dashboard with all the videos that they can see um, um, and an, an activity list, what you might expect. You can click into one to view it and then you can make it full screen, etc., in exactly the same way. Um, what you do get with VIMP, which you didn't have before, is there's now a mobile theme. So you can see those three screens on a mobile 
phone. So it's much, and also on a tablet, although I haven't got screenshots of that. So it's much easier to use the whole platform when you're out and about. For those of you who like to colour things in, I've done a version of this in the GWR theme. Um, so that would be the login page. That would be the candidate dashboard. That would be watching a film. We don't like that picture, Stuart. What's going on? No? OK. Um, and again, a mobile theme. So it becomes all a lot more usable. Any questions on a new theme in Assess2? Someone writes a comment, what will happen? OK, so you can configure the way comments work. You can either disable them altogether, which is how your current platform is set up, or you can have open comments, which allows people to just write anything willy-nilly, which is a tad dangerous. Or you can set up a comment, a comment moderator. So the comments go into somebody's list and they can approve them or not. But you choose, and you can choose that, I believe, looking at Emma, you can choose that on a video-by-video -video basis. Yes. I think you should ask. Well, yeah, and the other bit was about the share, and the whole the whole idea of these films were that they were private. Um, yes, well, you can turn all these options on and off, off on a per video basis. Yeah. So you you configure them. You have a set of defaults that you can override on a per video basis. So you can share them. So some some of them you do want people to share potentially. One of my pet hates with the old assess tube is where we linked to a video um, somewhere else, say, on a book. You click on the link, it takes you to a tube where you have to log in. Yeah, that's not the case anymore. And then you log in, and it loses the link to the video, and you're just left with the rubbish search function. Yeah, and that was a, that was a function of the old Cumulus Clips platform. We have proper, there's proper security, pro blah, blah, blah proper security options on this, so you can set it up as gated, so you view it directly from the link. Gated and private, I think, are the options you need. Cool. So, just for Mr. Taylor, we'll talk about integration. Not just for Mr. Taylor, everybody wants integration. So, I'm gonna start by sharing a vision of where I think we are heading no, not think, where I know we're heading in terms of integrating the systems. And I'll start with our three systems, AssessBook, ACMS, and AssessTube. They're already somewhat integrated in that you can view data from AssessBook and AssessTube on ACMS, and you can also embed videos on AssessTube into AssessBook. So they're already somewhat integrated. I'm going to improve that. I'm just sharing the vision now. I'm going to talk about each of these topics in a minute. We talked last year um, about the ability to get data out of apps people use for training. The apps, um, we had a long discussion last year with Brendan about how if people were using his training apps, that data could be pulled into a book and used to map to performance criteria and things. That's already there in terms of plumbing. Nobody's actually using it, but we could do some more work on that. We've had a lot of requests for training management systems, which is why Joe is here. Um, Joe's not here. He was here earlier. I think he's setting his room up for this afternoon. Training management systems are um, largely for the booking of physical courses. So they allow you to book rooms and resources and people and stuff. But given that we all do blended learning, we need to integrate that into um, um, the booking of electronic courses. And this actually came about... Um, Daniel's in the room, Daniel Prias from National Express. He, um, we're doing this for him first of all, in fact. Uh, we're building an interface to Smith. We've only been waiting five years to do this, but they are finally ready. And um, we're going to, um, Smith, for any of you who don't know, is the incident reporting system for heavy rail. We're also going to build an interface to Tear, which is the light rail version of that. And we have got more requests than you can poke a stick at to take data from HR systems. So that's where we're going. And what I'm going to do is talk about each of those interfaces now in a bit more detail. So, first of all, where are we at the moment? Well, as I said, we've got user accounts on our three systems linked by a common email address. Um, you can already view progress on ACMS from the other two systems. 
And we have integrated reporting. So on ACMS, you can pull reports that contain data from all three systems. You can already link um, questions on assessbook to performance criteria on ACMS and use that to seed assessments. That's where we are today. What's next? Well, the first thing we're going to do is single sign-on. Uh, we're going to put in support for Active Directory and... Uh, I've forgotten. Azure, is it called? Uh, yeah. Yes, Active Directory and Azure, so that single sign-on can be a thing. Everybody wants single sign-on. We are also going to look at pushing ACMS audiences to Assessbook and AssessTube. And we're largely doing this because we did some work with Rosie on trying to set audiences up on Assessbook, and the base Totra functionality is clunky at best. So we've done a bit of feasibility on that, and uh, we'll, that's on our work stack. Directed learning content. This has been a slightly long-term ambition that is now, we're now starting to realise, whereby if you go out and assess someone and you give them an amber or a red, it can suggest training content that they might want to look at. So you can direct them at the learning content. And in the longer term, even subscribe them to the course on the basis of your assessment. And the, uh, and the final thing is schedules integration. So scheduling people on training courses and particularly quizzes as part of their competence cycle so that you can make less inter interventions with them about the things they know. You could just make interventions with them about the things they don't know, and, which is obviously much more efficient. So let's have a little look at schedules integration. You've all seen this slide before, I think, or at least a, a version of it. A person has a schedule, maybe two years, maybe three years, and in that schedule you have a number of um, periods, which are the scheduled assessments, and you have performance criteria, and you can decide which performance criteria you ought to be hitting in which period. And at the end, you can pull forward for review anything you haven't seen in the cycle or was last marked at red or amber. We all know that, yeah? Hurrah. So the new bit is the idea that you could put some other events into the schedules that were perhaps training, in quotes, type events. And they could be courses on Assessbook or videos on AssessTube. And you could direct those at periods in exactly the same way as you direct criteria. As long as you put quizzes at the end of those courses, they will, they will provide you enough data to make an assessment on the basis of that quiz, and you'll have less to do when you review them at the end. Does that make sense? Andrew's got a question. He's bursting for a question. <coughs> Can you go through the lo logic of how the training bits get completed again, please? Um, so they would get completed by the course that they're pointing at them being completed or the video being watched. So that's the schedule, the, so the schedule period gets completed, but it doesn't give you the opportunity to assess against how well they've completed it unless they do a quiz. So it depends how you set your schedules up, but if you set them up as periods, then you would have an assessment event associated with that. So the candidate would complete it by doing the course, but it would still be shown as a, on the CMS events as something the assessor needs to go and assess because we're not automatically making assessments at this stage. When we start to do that automatically, it would make a like a draft assessment for an assessor to go and have a look at and fiddle with and approve. But we're not there yet. And you can only complete the training bits. What do I call them if they're not periods? Well, they are periods. Okay, the training. You can, only special. you can only complete the special super duper training periods if you complete a course on assess book as opposed to, because I like to have a course with all the learning materials and resources for a program, say a traction conversion program, in the one course. Yeah. So it would be really useful if we could specify that a component or a topic of a course has been completed and that completes the training schedule? Definitely. So the, the truth, we haven't done this work yet. This is on the to-do list, so we need to talk to you. But the 
but periods are completed by assessments, okay? So, but you do need to track what needs to be done before the assessor can go and do the assessment. And in my head, that was a completed course, but it could equally be a completed activity. And finally, I think, let's say we have uh, six SCORM packages that need to be completed um, for a candidate to have done the learning bits of a schedule prior to a final assessment. No, ignore that question. Yeah, you could set the, I'm with you, you could set the dependencies up on assess books such that the quiz wasn't available until they'd done all the learning would be the answer. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Any more questions on schedules integration? There's a, there is a um, syndicate, uh, an ACMS syndicate this afternoon. So if you've got some thoughts about this, we'd be really interested to hear it in the syndicate because this is something we haven't started work on yet and we do want to get right because it's very powerful. We'll get you over, Andrew, to come and get your oar out. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is training management system integration. And there's a syndicate on this this afternoon as well. So training management systems are systems where you can um, plan all your resources. So you can do your, ro your room, you can send out joining instructions to your candidates, you can book your trainer, you can book your projector and your flip chart and anything else. And there are a ton of them on the market, but the one we like is called Access Planet. And they have built some integration to Moodle systems before, which we're going to ride on the back of. So uh, Joe and his friend are going to present this in the syndicate exercise this afternoon, so you get a chance to see it. But because we're all in this world where blended learning is a thing, even if we go to an actual physical training course, quite often want to put people on an e-learning course so that they can do a quiz, especially if we want to track competence by mapping their criteria at the end of it, so it's all joined up. So, however, it's a bit annoying to have to go and put people on your training management system and then go and put them on your learning management system. It's all a bit annoying. So basically, Access Planet can manipulate data on a CES book to enrol candidates on courses and it can make new candidates or pick up existing candidates and it will respect all the, use, all the um, groups and audiences on that system. Cool. Training apps integration, we talked about... Are you sure? The Access Planet, if it does that auto-enrolment, presumably it goes live from the date they start the course and... You have all the same options you already have. Good. So you can enrol at a future date, you can do open enrolment, you can do all the things you can already do on Assessbook. Um, training apps integration. This is about collecting data from Brendan's apps, and Brendan has a syndicate exercise also this afternoon, where he's going to show you some of his new apps. I don't know what he's going to show you, actually, but I'm sure it's going to be exciting. And this is, again, about collecting answers to questions or click-based events or time-based events, how long did they take to do it, that sort of thing. And again, you can use the plugins, uh, collecting that onto a book, and then perhaps using the plugins to map that to actual performance criteria. Um, in order to see data on assessments. Any questions about that? No? So other interfaces. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk to Smiz. And I was hoping the Smiz man was going to be here today, but he isn't, I don't think. Um, so Smiz Plus is the incident recording system for heavy rail. And if you use the ACMS incident module today, you have to cut and paste stuff between that Go and have a word with them, Gabriel, will you? <laughs> um, so you have to cut and paste data between SMIS and our incident management system, and it's annoying, and it's been annoying for years. Um, SMIS have been very busy doing the thing that they're now calling SMIS Plus, which was a massive uplift of the system, but we are actually starting work with them next month on the specification, so fingers crossed a, an interface to SMIS Plus could finally be a reality. We're also talking to Tear, who do the same thing for light rail. Um, and lots of you have requests to take data out of HR systems. So when a person joins the company, you have to put them on the HR system. It would be very nice if that made them an account 
on um, a record on ACMS with a safety critical role in everything. So, um, so we're looking at that. We need to do that on a case-by-case -case basis as you've all got different HR systems. So if you could all get your heads together and use the same one, that would be very helpful. <laughs> so this is what we're heading for. I'm going to hand over to Gabriel now, who's going to do a questions wash-up. We're going to do some questions. So you sit down there. This is going to be our panel. This is going to be our panel. And then we can um, make them answer questions. Have we got the... Tempted to put Jace up there, but I think he's fine where he is. You join in the panel. Are the... Um, ben, are the mics working? OK. Hello. Oh, right. Oh, my gosh. Too close. Too close. Now, this is the issue for me. Mine's the opposite way from Stuart. So... And then I can't read that. So it's going to be a bit of. Um... I'm going to start with the most popular and then we'll work down, and then I'll choose my favourite as well because it's a good one. So it says here can we have simp a simple guide as to what current bugs there are and if the user needs to do a workaround until it's fixed? This will be useful to have on ACMS so that users can see without asking an admin. Yeah, so I think that's a really good idea. So in May, we, we, what we tried to do is send out a newsletter, and we did one in May, and I don't think anybody read it, so that was clearly... I guarantee not, Stuart read it. Okay. Uh, we certainly didn't get any feedback on it, so I don't, that wasn't the right way. So we probably do need to find a... We need to think about... The problem is not so much knowing what the bugs are or what the workarounds are. It's where to put them so people can find them. What was that? It's just on that side. Okay. In the camera way. Ah, sorry, a bit of di directorial <laughs> intervention <laughs> there. Um, so the issue is more where to put them on ACMS so that people can find them. So maybe we could have a think about that in the syndicate this afternoon. Um, I myself would like to revisit the newsletter. We might do it not as often because it does have other things other than just the bugs, which I think you found useful. But it might be good to talk to you, Stuart, about that. Um, this one. Can ACMS be more usable on a tablet? The old version, 4.x, worked well, but switched to 5.x, and it's not so good. Our train crew use it to review a lot of their own assessments. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. And in fact, one of the scheduled activities for this afternoon's syndicate is to try and get a list of the activities you most want to be able to do on a tablet so that we can prioritise some development around that. Yeah, essentially it needs a... F it, because of the way touchscreens work, um, a lot of the admins need a, a special thing writing for it, so it's not just a, a, a simple way of everything will work on there immediately. Um, so yeah, do let us know the priority list for what you want on that one. Uh, so these can be happening in the uh, syndicate exercise later on. Uh, feature request, can we get an email notification to the candidate when completed but not sealed an assessment needs be, when an assessment needs to be sealed by a candidate? So can we have an email notification to the candidate to go and do some sealing? We can do yes. that already, can't we? Go? Can we do that already? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how do we set that up? Uh, I'll set it up in the next release. Okay. Can you get a ticket for that on Redmine? So whoever wants it, make a ticket for it and it'll happen. Yeah, that's already a current feature. Yeah. Creep. Can we have... What was that? No? Some, there's another microphone. If anyone you want to grab it, jump up if we need to. Can we, have a ca can we have candidate data that has been uploaded, viewable, from within AssessTech, instead of having to email it to ourselves, then open and read it? So in um, ACMS 5.1, we've been trialing this a little bit with evidence on investigations. Um, instead of having to email it to yourself, which was our previous way of doing it, um, such that it kind of worked on every, everybody's setup, um, you can now view that in the browser. Um, if this is something that works well for people, and we, ha and we haven't had any issues currently, um, we can move that out onto other parts of the system as well. I think we need to remind ourselves why we email it. And we, we reverted to, we did used to show it in the browser, but because um, we don't have control over your browsers, and rightly so, 
people have a whole range of different plugins installed. So some of the attachments would pop up, some wouldn't, and we had a lot of trouble um, and couldn't get um, much help from the various IT teams in your companies to resolve this. So we took that away because we're getting a lot of support calls for it and made it, email mail it emailable. But I think browsers have moved on a bit now and probably that is a piece of functionality we could well afford to open up again. So one of the reasons why I think ACMS works so nicely is because we are heavy users of it ourselves. So these questions for me are just as good because I can go, look, they do want it. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't you be it. changing sides, Gabriel. I can. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on everybody's side. Um, so um, da -da -da -da. what have we got? Mobile site for candidates. This is really important for us. Can this be pushed up the list of feature requests? ACMS 5 is unusable on a small phone screen. Yeah, I don't think ACMS, I don't think we have any intention of making ACMS usable on a phone screen. We do have intention of making it usable on a tablet. That was a design decision we took fairly early on that I don't believe we want to revisit. Okay. Uh, Back-end configuration could be more user-friendly. Schedules should be editable after being sealed, i.e. minor edits and they are, should be able to be made. Yeah, we have done a little bit of thinking about this. It's very difficult because if you open up too much to be edited, you make a nonsense of the assessments that have already been done on those schedules. Um, because if you give someone a schedule, it's right to assume that schedule is going to be stable until they finish it. So we have to be very careful about what we open up for editing, but we have done some thinking about it. And again, we could do a bit of, if you've got something specific, can you bring it to the... Um, Syndicate this afternoon. Yeah, bring it to the syndicate. We need to be really careful about schedules, 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 whatever you want to call them, about changing them when they've been set up as, with assessment data because we want to make sure that um, our system is robust and is not open to changes after the fact or we've left loopholes. So we need to be careful of that. We, we've got some odds and sods of just bugs and bits and bobs, and we need to add some new criteria in. Got you. Yeah. How easy is it to transfer, if, if the schedule is exactly the same, but a criteria that hasn't yet been assessed against because it's a new train, is it easy to port everyone over to a version 2 as opposed to a version 1? So it depends what you're trying to do. If you're simply trying to add criteria, add extra criteria, we do have a facility coming in 5.2, which is called Criteria Bolt-Ons. So you will be able to add criteria into a criteria set and a schedule. If you want to change criteria, you do need to move people to a new schedule because it's not really fair to change criteria under people's feet when they've already been assessed. But, no, so what that takes is a long time. So if I make a new schedule today, I've got to wait three years till everyone has moved over to the new schedule. No, but you, if, you if haven't. Ever, you haven't. You can ask us to do a schedule migration. You can ask us to move people from one schedule to another. It is, it's not something we've put in the hands of you and your admins because it's very easy to get it in a muddle, basically. But we write a little tool to migrate people, we have a bit of system downtime, run the migration, and, and boot you back up again. And we've done this for a couple of people. We did it for Hex a couple of times. I think we might have done it for C2C a few years ago as well. Excellent. Good. Thank you. But the, we just need to be careful of um, if we, because we ran this before, and it can end up as a bit of a slippery slope. What can you change? What's allowed to be changed? Um, so I think the bolt-on bit is going to be useful, and that's what I've been asking for to help as well. Um, You've got another question, Gabriel. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, just just to add to that, I wasn't aware of that schedule migration. That probably would have solved. Uh, um, resulted in a lot less pain for us in some respect. I, I do have a suggestion. The features that are available in the system that we don't know about or we don't have access to, can, can we have a list of them or something? We can try. I think, uh, we, and we will try. I think if you're going to try and, as a piece of advice, if you're going to try and do something a bit complicated, give Brock a ring. He's often got an easy way. I mean, these guys are here every day on the end of a phone. Just ask them, because they will help. That's so what, yeah. what they're paid for. Yeah, so we've got, we've got all the customer support guys are in the office. We've got downstairs, we've got all the people who are writing all the software, all in the same building. So if you've got a question or it's complicated, please always ring up before you do something crazy or before you set out to do a load of work that you might not need to do, just call us up. The, I mean, the worst they can say is, sorry, it's going to take you ages. <laughs> um, 
Which, yes. Yeah. <laughs> is it possible for a user to submit a form anonymously useful for confidential reporting or well-meaning criticism of training? On ACMS at the moment, no. We do have, you can do anonymous feedback forms on Assessbook. That is part of the, so if you set up a training course on Assessbook, you can ask for trainer feedback in an anonymous way and you can repurpose that for any sort of feedback. Um, it's actually pretty impossible to do things on genuinely anonymously on ACMS because people are logged in, so we sort of always know who it is. Uh, when an appealed assessment gets put into the review state, what happens if the appeal gets escalated to the next level, effectively passing it on to another more senior assessor? Can this process be reflected in the state's design? Yeah, that is the way it works. So when it's in the review state, if the candidate and the assessor can't agree, uh, someone who's got the tick verifier needs to get involved. No, it doesn't actually have to be a verifier, but that's what we've called it. And they get involved and move that assessment into one state or another. And you know who's done it, and every person in the process gets to comment on why they did it. So apologies if I didn't make that clear, but that is how it actually works. There's a question further down which I noted, and um, which says, why do we keep referring to the verifier when we've, it's been changed to RQA for a long time? Yes, that's right. Yes, it's very difficult for people who've learnt one thing to change yeah, over. Yeah, that would be because but I'm old. Internal Sorry. quality assurer, Sally will move forwards. Right. <laughs> that, I'm on a personal development program. If we, put, if we put the auto seal function on, will it seal the assessments done in the past? No. No, it won't. Would, no, no, that's fine. I'm just going <laughs> to say the next one. How would we address, would that, is that something that we can address if someone wanted to go through and do that? Um, I, I guess we could do a back-end tool to do that. I mean, the purpose of the new widget on the home page is to allow assessors to see their draft assessments and do something. Oh, it's, no, this is the complete ones, isn't it? Yeah, this is complete to auto-sealed. We could certainly run a report to find them all so then people could deal with them. Come and, help, come and talk to us. Yeah. Individually, we'll help we need to think about that. Could you, could you do, like, could you do a, like a bulk seal? Yeah, we yes. could. Yeah, we, yeah, could. Yeah. we could write so, a tool to do so, that, so yes. Say if we said we want everything from like 30 days from before now sealed. So we've got loads of unsealed ones, and there's yeah. no way they'll ever get done by the managers. Yeah, we could uh, probably set those to auto sealed cool. as, as a bulk activity. And, and that's why one of the reasons why we have this distinction between we have a different state called auto sealed such that when you look back at those you know it's sealed because of an auto seal or because it wasn't necessarily done by the candidate that's why we do keep those separate as well what you need to do is give give rock a shout come and talk to him and james as well james where are you put your hand up there james over there um they can help you sort those bits out um can the forms be linked to a candidate, such as an assessor, upload something related to the candidate rather than themselves? Yes, anybody can do anything as long as you set the parameters on the form appropriately. Which brings us to the next one. If a user has candidate-only access, will they be able to complete forms? Yes, if you decide to add forms access to the candidate-only security group. Perfect. <laughs> 